Okay, so a rotation is one of these. The spin, okay? So you can spin in different directions, um, but the um, kind of standard way is counterclockwise, which is this direction, okay? So if the problem just says rotate, like on this first example, it means counterclockwise. So sometimes it might ask you to go clockwise, but otherwise um, counterclockwise, okay? So um, on this first example, I'm gonna take point A and I'm gonna rotate it, okay? And you have to rotate about a certain point. And that certain point is called the center of rotation, okay? So um, most often it's gonna be the origin, the point zero, zero. And that just means think about this as the sun in this, uh, in this solar system here. So things are gonna rotate in a counterclockwise um, direction about that, so something like that, right? So that point is going to stay put. It's like the center of the clock, okay? So point A is going to go somewhere that direction, okay? Now you could actually measure out a 90 degree angle and then measure how far away you are from the origin and kind of figure it out like that, but you don't have to do that when we're on, a, on an XY axis, okay? Um, I'm going to put in some old ticks here just because it's a little hard to see. Um, so um, the problems you'll get in the book mostly are going to be multiples of 90 degrees. So you get, might get a 90 degree rotation or 180 or 270, okay? If you think about 360 degrees, if this rotated 360 degrees, it'd wind up right back where it started, okay? So 90 degrees, if you compare that to 360, 90 is one quarter of 360. So this means this is gonna be a quarter spin around, okay? And that's really handy, okay? So I'm gonna use the little method here that's not gonna work great if you're looking at a computer screen and doing these problems online, um, but it works really nicely if you have a piece of paper in front of you. So what you could do if you're working on a computer is make a little sketch of whatever you're drawing on a piece of paper, or you know, if you have the physical book or you could print out pages from the book if you wanted to, okay? But well, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a quarter turn to the left. So I'm gonna actually take my paper and spin it a quarter turn to the left, okay? So I just turned that a quarter turn to the left, and now I'm gonna think, well, where is point A in relationship to the um, center of rotation? So I'm just pretending this is a new XY axis, and this would be three units to the left, two units up, okay? So sometimes by the time I'm done with the problem, I forget. So I like to just make myself a little note. Three to the left, two up, okay? So now I'm gonna tip my paper back up the right direction, and I'm gonna plot the point negative three, two. So I'm gonna go three left, two up. That's gonna put me right here, and that's where this point would end up after a 90 degree rotation, okay? There are also rules that you can memorize, like what happens to the x-y pair when you do a 90 degree turn? Well, the x and the y are gonna switch positions and your original y will change signs. To me, those are difficult to, to remember. So what I like to do instead is just turn the paper and look where it's gonna end up, okay? So there's my rotation 90 degrees about the origin, okay? So once you guys try the next one, try rotating point m 90 degrees about the origin. You can pause if you need to. I'm going to just go for it. So I'm, it's going to go that way. I'm going to, there's the sun, right? So I'm going to tip my paper 90 degrees, and I'm thinking, okay, this is one to the left, two down. So one to the left, two down. Just make myself a little note so I don't forget. One to the left, two down. And then I tip it back up, plot it right there. And this is going to be M prime. One to the left two down. And on the previous example, I forgot to say that this is A prime, right? That's after the, the, the transformation, okay? All right, so let's try going 180 degrees. So I'm still going this direction, although with 180 degrees, it actually doesn't matter if, which way you go, but I'm always gonna go counterclockwise anyways, okay? So here's the sun again. So 90 degrees, that's, is, uh, you know, uh, is 90 degrees times two is 180. So this is, two 90 degree turns, right? So that just means I'm gonna go, there's 90 degrees, here is 180 degrees. And then I'm gonna think, well, where did M end up? It would be two to the right, one down. 
Okay, so I make myself a little note, two to the right, one down, so I don't forget. I'm going to flip my paper back up, two to the right, one down, two to the right, one down, two to the right, one down is right there. Okay, and it ended up on the other end of the uh, solar system there, right? 180 degrees, halfway around the circle. So it actually wouldn't have mattered if we went that direction because we'd still be halfway around the circle, okay? And let's try 270 degrees. So if you think about it, 270 degrees, that's 90 times three, right? Nine times three is 27. So this is gonna be three 90 degree turns. Okay, so that just means I'm gonna flip my paper three times. So there's one turn, two turns, and three turns. And then I'm thinking point M is at one to the right, two up. One to the right, two up. Make myself a little note there. And I'll turn my paper back up the right way. One to the right, two up. Puts me right there. And there's the coordinates, okay? So, yeah, that's my method. Okay, so let's try the next one. So the, we were just rotating a single point there on those previous problems, but we can rotate an entire triangle or any polygon. We can really rotate just about anything. Okay, so this is going about the origin again, 270 degrees, that direction. So that's going to be three turns, right? So again, I'm going to rotate the paper one two, three, okay? And then I'm definitely going to make myself some notes because I'm going to forget all this if I don't make myself notes. So A is going to end up at zero, one, okay? And I have two different A's here, so let's, I'm going to, I'll fix this on your paper, but that's, let's make this C, okay? So B is going to be at three, one, And then C is going to be at 2, 2. Okay, so now I'm just going to flip the paper back up, right way up, and I'll plot all those new points. So let's see. Um, A should have ended up here. Here's B. And then C was at 2, 2. Okay, sometimes I like to just plot all of the points before I label them because I always get the labels in the way, so that's why I did that. So but this was A, that A prime actually, after the rotation. B was right here, here's B, B prime, and C prime. And there we rotated that entire triangle. And again, it should look, um, it should look congruent to the original um, triangle. So it should look the same size and shape. Also, you might notice, hey, if I go three quarters of the way around counterclockwise, it's the same as doing 90 degrees to the left. So a little shortcut on the 270 degrees, that would be 90 degree turn um, clockwise, right? Okay, so instead of going three around that direction, I could have just gone one turn to the right, and then I'd get the same result, okay? All right, let's move on to the next set of problems, okay? So we're still going to be doing um, rotations that are 90 or 180 or 270, but these ones are not going to be about the origin, so they're a little bit trickier, okay? Um, but not too much trickier. So what you want to do first is... Um, is, is plot the center of rotation. So, you know, the sun here is not at the origin. The sun is at the point one, one. So I'm gonna plot that point right there, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pretend that point P is um, the center of a new X, Y axis. So I'm gonna plot some dashed lines like that. And I'm just going to ignore the original x, y axis, okay? And I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees, but it's going to rotate about this, right? 
So it's going to spin around this, not around the origin. Okay, so then I'm still going to just turn the paper 90 degrees to the left, and then I'm thinking, where is point A in relationship to the center of rotation? Well, it's two units to the left, one unit up. So two units left, one unit up. Now, i got to remember, it's not at negative 2, 1. It's two to the left, one up from the center of rotation. So I've got to count two units to the left here and one unit up there. And so A prime is actually going to end up here. Okay, to the left, one up from here, not from the origin, from the center of rotation. And then I'm thinking, what are these coordinates? And a lot of people are right, oh, it's negative 2, 1. No, it's not. You gotta, when you're writing the coordinates, then you have to move back to the original, um, the original x, y axis. So I'm looking, okay, this is actually 1 left, 2 up from the original origin. Okay, and there's my rotation. And you can kind of visually see that, yeah, that does look like it's rotated about here, right? Okay, why don't you guys try the next one? You can go ahead and pause it. I'm going to get going on it. So we're going to rotate about negative 1, 2. So negative 1, 2 is right here. Okay, and then I'm going to make myself some dashed lines just to kind of visually get a sense of what I'm rotating about. And it makes it easier to tell where your point's going to end up to. Okay, so I'm going 270 degrees. So I'm going to go three turns. Um, it's, it's going this way, right? Counterclockwise. You could technically go 90 degrees in the other direction, but I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. There's one turn, two turns, and three turns. Okay, and then I'm thinking, where did M end up? in relationship to here. So I have one unit left, one unit up. Okay, so then I'm going to flip my paper back up the right way. And from the center of rotation, I'm going to go one unit left, one unit up. One unit left, one unit up, puts me right here. So here's M prime. And then the coordinates of that, it's tempting to say negative one, one, but I'm going from here. So it's actually negative two, um, three. Okay, and there is point M. Okay, let's move on. So rotational symmetry. So a, um, a figure is going to have rotational symmetry if it maps onto itself with a rotation about its center of less than 360 degrees. Okay. So with these examples, I want to see, can I turn this less than 360 degrees and have it look the same, okay? Because 360 degrees, that's not very much fun, okay? So let's take my, my mouse here. I can rotate this 360 degrees, and it looks the same as it started. But you can do that with anything, right? So here's a calculator. I can rotate this 360 degrees, and it'll look the same. But if I do, say, 90 degrees, nope, that does not look the same. It's sideways now, right? Or if I did 180, it's upside down. So 360 degrees is no fun because that works with everything. We want to see if we can get a rotation of less than 360 degrees, okay? So um, th these are kind of just visual. We're not going to be measuring anything, but you have to imagine the center of the figure. So that would be about there, okay? And then I'm rotating. So what I want to do is think, well, what if I took a... Uh, could I turn this less than 360? Well, yeah, sure. If I took this top part and turned it just so it got that top part was right there. So in other words, if I spun it like this, it looks the exact same, like a plus sign, right? So I want to think you could actually, you know, spin it all the way upside down, or you could do a 270 degree spin. But we want to use um, we want to use the smallest possible angle of rotation, okay? Sometimes the book, it will have you list all the angles of rotation, but for me, I like to just do the smallest one. So does this figure have rotational symmetry? Yes, it does. I can spin it less than 360 degrees, and it'll look the exact same, and it'll map onto itself, okay? The smallest angle of rotation is going to happen when I've rotated that 90 degrees, then turn my paper sideways to the left like that, okay? So, you know, if you turned it 180, yeah, that would work too. 
because it's two 90 degree turns. So any amount of 90 degree turns is going to work. So your book is sometimes going to say, well, yeah, 180 works and so does 270. But of course they do because those are just multiple 90 degree turns. Okay. So that's the one that I'm interested in. Okay. All right. So let's try this uh, division symbol right here. Okay. Now, if I'm imagining turning this 90 degrees to the left, by the way, this don't have to be 90 degree turns. They can be other turns, but it's just how these first examples are working. If I do 90 degrees here, it doesn't look the same. It doesn't look like a division symbol anymore. But if I go 180, now I'm in business, right? It's a division symbol. Again, looks the exact same. So this is going to be a yes, and it's going to be a 180 degree um, angle of rotation. Okay. All right. Next up, let's look at this T. So, okay, I'm going to start turning it. I'm just going to physically turn the paper. So, no, it doesn't look the same. Now it's a sideways T. Nope, 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 nope. It's upside down T. Another sideways T. It doesn't look the same until we get all the way around. So 360 degrees, but it has to be less than 360 degrees. So this is going to be a no. And then, you know, if so, well, it's not. So we can't do that part. Okay. All right. And last we have, um, this is a pentagon. So here's the center of this pentagon. Okay. And what I like to do with problems like this is think, well, how far would it take me to get that corner to move so that it would wind up right there? Okay, so if I was turning this to the left, when that corner ended up right there, then it would look the exact same, right? So, you know, when I get to something like that, then I've got the flat piece at the top again, right? And it's going to, or never mind, I get the next corner at the top now, okay? Just like there's a corner at the top here, okay? So, my answer is yes, and now I've got to figure out what that angle is, okay? And here's, um, here's a way we can handle this. What I can do, I can think, okay, I'm really looking for this angle. All right? So let's kind of think of this as a pie, and we can, or a pizza or something, and it's a weird shaped pizza. But we can, let's cut this up into the different slices, like so, okay? So now if I count those slices, there are five slices, right? And all those slices are going to be the same um, size and shape, okay? So I know the whole circle is 360 degrees, so that means that this angle is going to be 360 degrees divided by 5. You know, so if I was doing the same problem with a hexagon, I'd take 360 divided by 6. Or if it was a nonagon, I'd do 360 divided by 9. But this one's a pentagon, so I'm dividing by 5. That's going to put me at 72 degrees, and so that's the smallest angle of rotation that will work. And, you know, any multiple of 72, that would, would work as well. That's less than a 360. Okay, that's the end of the section. See you next time.